Anyway, apart from that, let's get into some topics and talk about the things that you want to talk about. Number one topic to talk about, get out of the way, is United um, drawing 1-1 against Chelsea the other day. I didn't mention it. I didn't want to talk about it because, you know, it's a distraught. I'm a distraught United fan. I just don't know where to start with this regard. Um, fairly even match. Uh, two teams who are... Um, the two teams who are, who are basically the mirror image of each other, right? Two former forces of the Premier League, now, you know, not at their pomp, um, kind of caught behind the times. Um, Chelsea probably are under development and they have a direction that they're going into. So I think if you're a Chelsea fan, it might not be the glitz and glamour football that you're used to. You might not be sw um, wiping teams. You, know, you might not be brushing teams aside. You might be winning the championships or the cups that they're winning previously. But I, st I still think if you're a Chelsea fan, there's a bit more, you have a bit more faith and a bit more hope because they have an infrastructure set up in that, t in that squad or in that club where in managers are quite interchangeable, as we've seen, right? Chelsea don't wait around. They usually just get rid of managers. They're not performing. But they also have a direction that they're going under with Sari. He's trying to he's trying to promote a particular brand of football. He's looking for a particular type of football players who I'm sure will probably have careers after Sari's left. So it's not it's not like these players that he's buying won't have um won't have a long Chelsea career after he's gone because they'll probably get a manager of the similar ilk, maybe playing more progressive football, maybe the football's more exciting, maybe he's more personable. I don't know what it'll be. But by and large, I think if you're a Chelsea fan, you're a bit, you're a bit more, um, you're a bit at ease with the situation at hand. But two former forces of the Premier League battling it out to see who's going to finish fourth, because absolutely no one wants to finish fourth, right? Especially off the back of um, Arsenal's loss the other day too. So the game was fairly, deep, fairly evenly matched. I think we kind of cancelled each other out for the most part. Man United probably had a bit more control of the game. I think our best bells of the, of the game came towards maybe the first 20 minutes or the first half an hour. Matter playing in that false nine position worked really well. He was really, he really performed amazing. Probably the best performance he's had against his former club Chelsea. And the Herrera came back into the team and slotted in amazingly, perfectly well. Um, again, it's just, um, it's just. Um, it's systematic of the United of nowadays that somebody like an Ander Herrera will get shipped out before someone like Fellaini. No, will get shipped out quicker than somebody like a Fellaini did. Fellaini hanged, hanged around like a bad smell for five seasons in our team. It's uh, he painfully obvious you couldn't play the football that we wanted. It was painfully obvious the way he plays football isn't the way we want to play football. It was painfully obvious that he was a simple average player. Who David Moyes got in, a, a manager who kind of somehow avoids any kind of blame in the press for some reason. Um... Somebody like Andy Herrera stays at the club less time than Fellaini. Memphis Depay left before Fellaini left. Um, Blind left before Fellaini left. Now, all these footballers who could possibly contribute something to what's going forward have now, you know, have been shipped out because, you know, they didn't necessarily, they didn't have the metal or the grit or whatever it may be. Fellaini hanging around like a bad smell. Now we've got Andy Herrera, one of our best midfielders, being let go on the free to Paris Saint-Germain, which is like, you know, you're thinking, of, you're looking at it and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. Again, the Ander Herrera situation is odd because I think generally everyone can agree he probably isn't the best midfielder in the world in that position. He probably, but he is the best midfielder for us in that team, right? He's a great team player. He hasn't come close to ever playing for the Spanish national team because, you know, Spain are in, um, incre incredibly blessed in the midfield department with the players they have at the moment. So I don't think it's any slight on him that he doesn't play for Spain. But he's probably been part of our team's best performances throughout the season. I think his record when we have him playing for us is amazing uh, about the amount of games that we win and don't lose. Um, he's he's or, or he's or always the one of the only players apart from maybe uh, Pogba who takes the ball on in tight areas in midfield and tries to run forward. He's very progressive with his passing. He's always trying to move the pitch. He's always trying to move the line up a bit further up the pitch, the midfield line. Just a generally a good player who kind of gets what it is to be a United player, cuts when we're losing, um, goes the extra mile when we're, when we're winning to try and make sure that we do win, being nasty, diving, rolling around, being, being a bit of a cunt. He's a great player, but somehow we're letting him go. Doesn't make any sense. Matic is still around. You know, obviously his legs are gone. Maybe he's played too much football, but regardless, he's not as good a player as he should be. We should have probably played Scott Matani from the beginning. Paul Popa had one of his best games as well against Chelsea, but the fans seem to have it in for him. I don't know what's going on there. I understand he's a bit of a prima donna. I understand he's a bit of a luxury player, but he's quite clearly, quite clearly, without a shadow of a doubt, our best player. Like, if we if we want to win a game now, especially with Rashford's form dipping, his lack of his injuries, um, confidence is not very high. Lukaku just looks like a, you know, he looks like a pub player at the moment. I don't know what's happened to him. It's the only player you see on that pitch who could, who could uh, you know, give us something and make us tick and score a goal or make some full something to happen is probably Paul Pogba. And close second maybe might be Scott McTominay and, jo and, and White Matter, right? Who could make something happen. In that regard, everyone else is kind of like, you know, really, really out of form, but people seem to have something out for Pogba. Anyway, the game progressed. We um, 
made an excellent move involving Lukaku actually a great um, interplay he kind of receives the ball with the right dinks it over the top with his left Luke showed burst into the area he probably should have shot which is he's, he's always a bit shy to shoot really but he cut it back great cut back onto Juan Mata wasn't an easy chance because the ball was going away from the goal and Mel Mata directed it back back away from the goal which is a good technique I've heard from strikers if you want to finish the ball really if you want to finish the goal really well try and hit it back from where it came from sort of thing so that was an amazing finish and then you're thinking okay cool let's build on this and try and get one more goal because you know Chelsea are no mugs they've got Hazard on the pitch they've got Willian um, they've got loads of weapons to bring on from the substitute bench like Pedro um, so you you fought and, and Giroud has obviously got a really good record against us you thought you know let them let's get another goal just to kind of get the game of, out of the way we don't do that we kind of huff and puff we don't really get, get control of the game Chelsea reset back control of the midfield passing around the pitch very well um Randomly, Antonio Rudiger, I don't know the last time he scored a goal or the last time he tried to even attempt a shot like that. He picks up the ball from 40 yards or so, bangs it, which kind of, you know, it's, it makes me think that there was a tactic from maybe the beginning. You know, De Gea has been a bit shaky as of late. He smashes it. Pr a pretty easy save for a keeper to make, especially a, a save easy enough for a keeper to make that the ball should go out for a corner. De Gea parries it right into the path of Marcos Alonso, who was incredibly high up the pitch, really. So, great, great um, tactical move from Chelsea. Um, and then uh, Marcus Alonso finishes it really well, actually. Tight angle and clips it in. It hits the inside of the post and rolls in. And it's 1 1. And from that moment on, you didn't really feel like we had any chance of coming back into the game. Um, we, it seems like Man United, at the, at the current stage we're at, as soon as, as soon as the team scores a goal, we don't necessarily have the metal or the fortitude or the intensity or the aggression or the grit needed in order to kind of um, level or to kind of win the game. We don't really seem like we have it in um, in a consistent basis. We do have, we've done it a couple of times in a season or a few times in a season, but it doesn't seem like we're able to do it a lot. And we just had that space where it just, it doesn't seem like it's going, it's going where it needs to be going. Um, and then the second half kind of, Developed into a bit of a damn squid, really. We didn't really get any more chances apart from that. No, Lingard had a good chance that he kind of missed. But again, I'm not really putting anything on that because he's not been good for a while. He's formed a bit a bit up and down. So I'm not really going to chastise him too much about it. He's up, you know. He's ever one of those times in his in his career where he kind of needs to really realize that he needs to pull his finger out. He's getting a bit older now. He's 26. He should be really in his pump and putting away chances like that. But that didn't happen. And then we started, and then we bring on McTominay, who I didn't agree with bringing him on because, you know, we needed to score a goal. Bringing on a defensive midfielder wasn't really a good idea, but credit, credit where credit's due, McTominay came on and really went for it. He was running around, he was trying to bring the ball forward, he was passing forward, he was being aggressive. He really kind of lifted the spirit up a little bit, but it didn't last long. And then the kind of the game basically petered out and into like a 1 1 draw, which essentially guarantees Chelsea Champions League football. I'm not too bothered about the Champions League football stuff, I don't really get the insistence with some of the fans to get Champions League football. I think most of them is because they want a night out. They want to go to a European tie. They want to go visit some of the best stadiums around Europe. I get it. But I think as a team, as a club, the last thing we need is to be rewarded for Champions League football with the way that we've been managed or mismanaged for the last six or so seasons. Um, I think from the boardroom level all the way down to the club, we need to take a hard look at ourselves and see the kind of mess we've got ourselves into. We hired a guy in David Moyes, who was a Sir Alex Ferguson clone. He didn't work out. We hired a guy in Van Gaal with a strong football philosophy and a way of playing. That didn't work out. We hired a serial winner in Rosa Mourinho. That didn't work out. There's something happening where the common denominator isn't the managers, it's the club. What are we doing to not facilitate or to not help these managers? You could look at David Moyes and say he should have been part of a strenuous interview process. He shouldn't have been given a job just because Alex Ferguson recommended it to, right? We shouldn't have taken any work from Alex Ferguson. You remember when there was a that talk that Arsenal Wenger was going to have a, a say in who was the next Arsenal manager, how the Arsenal um, uh, fan base freaked out? Admittedly so. You can't have an ex-manager who was, you know... Um, who was a failure for the most part, especially towards the end of his um, tenure there, have uh, any input into who gets a new job? Because, you know, how can we trust your opinion when you haven't been able to, you know, um, ace it in the league for quite a while? It didn't make any sense. And in general, it's a conflict of interest. It doesn't make any sense while you do that. You'd want to have a complete break, um, shake hands, say thank you for your service and go to another direction. It didn't happen. Van Gaal is a, is a manager who we probably should have invested the entire three seasons into, right? The style of play that he wanted, the fact that it required a lot of uh, mental acumen from the players, it required a lot of technical nows. It wasn't a system that would favour some of the players that are in our team. A lot of the players in our team hated Van Gaal because he was asking them to do extra work, saying so about meetings and stuff. I think in terms of a cultural shift, in terms of how we understand the, how the game is played and position-based football, which is kind of what it's changing into now, you look at how Leicester performance against Arsenal, like amazing position-based football, 
you see that the way we're playing now is probably, you know, a little bit draconian. It's a little bit old school how we're playing on the counter-attack and just soaking up pressure and then trying to spring on the counter-attack. It doesn't really work that well. Look at what uh, uh, Atletico Madrid can probably tell you that with, uh, with some assurance. So you kind of thought, you know, maybe we'd kind of invest three years into him. We didn't. We cut it short. Then Mourinho comes in and Mourinho's a manager we all know who needs a checkbook and needs a the complete authority of a club in order to kind of make them successful. We didn't give that to him either. We undermined his authority. We didn't give him the money that he wanted. He invested poorly. That is truth to be said but also he just said he wanted to reinvest again he looked at the man city model and said hey look they signed a million fullbacks one didn't work out they just went out and signed another one right the carl walker thing and benjamin medi is a good example right they signed benjamin medi because he wasn't really sure or made up on carl walker look at john stones and laporte and stuff like that those kind of players you know what i mean like like for like substitute um signings um you sign the other one to put more pressure on the other one to kind of keep the standards high doesn't happen so i think Champions League football will be the worst kind of reward. It would paper over the cracks and I don't think things will be addressed. I do don't think things will be addressed anyway. I think sometimes when the way things happen in the football club, it's not by coincidence. The fact that we've been failing for so long isn't by chance. I just think we're run by absolute dullards from the top to the bottom. Um, but I think in general, the last thing that anyone needs at that club is to get Champions League football. We don't need that right now. What, what we need is a team... Um, is a club that knows what they're doing, is a club that has a kind of direction of what they want to do, how they want to do things, and a real kind of plan, a long term plan. A plan that doesn't a plan that isn't emotional, a plan that's ruthless, a plan that has direction. I wouldn't be I would I would be completely happy if the plan involved Soul Shark in some extent. If he fails along the line, then I also be would be wouldn't be too happy. I wouldn't be too um um upset if the plan that doesn't involve him either. But I want to see, I want to know there's a plan because I know deep down there isn't. I know if Solskjaer starts this next season off horrible and we're 10th place by Christmas, he's going to get sacked and we'll have no plan there. I know that for sure. That's a problem I have. And the talk now we have, you know, a news broke recently that Rio Ferdinand has joined the list of sporting director for Manchester United. Uh, they're looking at Mark, Mike Feeling as being director of football. It's just absolute bobbins, absolute bullshit that we're going through. For a club like Man United to be in such an array, such a disarray, such a mess is really scary. I'm hoping that the lack of Champions League football would guarantee us some kind of change, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, we might end up getting Europa League, which was not nothing, something that I don't want. I don't think most fans will want either. But I think we are where we are for a reason. We are where we are because we deserve to be. And I think everyone at the club needs to take some collective responsibility for what's happened basically at this football team and really try and make a change going forward. It's not going to happen because, you know, we're run by an absolute idiots and they don't know what they're doing. But you really hope that's going to happen. Um, this is the article about Rio Ferdinand being on the shortlist for it. Rio Ferdinand, Manchester United shortlist for director of football. Like, I don't get it. Like, what does that even... Why? Why would you do this? Don't, why just hire the best people for the job? It's just turned into a complete old boys club, right? Nothing's working, so let's just hire all our ex for all our ex players from all, from the most storied and um, trophy littered uh, campaign, and just get them all in and hope that works out. Like right, bloody hell! Rio Ferdinand has won several candidates to have spoken about the becoming the first sporting director of Sports Sky Sports News. United executive Ed Woodward has discussed his position with Ferdinand and wants to finalize an appointment before the next start of next season. United won a candidate who understands how the club works, which makes Ferdinand, who spent 12 years as player in a club and an, an attractive advocate, the person who fills the newly appropriated role, expected to focus on the transfer market, the academy, and supporting the management team. Oligan Solskjaer, who was appointed, is willing to work with the sporting director and has been involved in discussions regarding the recruitment. In contrast, Solskjaer's pieces, Jose Mourinho was against such an appointment. During the time as a player, United, Ferdinand made 455. Look, man, I don't have any problem with him being on the shortlist, but you have to go for the best man for the job. I don't know what sporting director does. I don't know what football director, football director does, but I look at some of the other clubs around, around Europe and I want us just to copy their model. I don't want us to try and do our own thing and try and figure out the, our own way of doing things. Can we just maybe copy what other people are doing and maybe do that first? Is that possible, right? We've been we've been failing for so long anyway, as it is. Why the fuck are we trying to do some things different than everyone else? Come on, man. Like, God almighty. But again, what do I know? Anyway, that, that was it. That was the game. That's, that's my match report. I'm not going to say too much of it. I just want to end the season to end and get it over and done with. We're horrible with shit. Everyone knows that. Let's keep it moving.